Hello, and welcome to the first lecture from chapter 13, which is all about biochemical signaling. And in this part of the, in this lecture video, we're going to discuss more about hormones. So hormones are really important for within our bodies or within multicellular organisms for helping to transmit signals among different cells. Um, so that's what we're going to discuss in this particular video. In the later videos for the rest of the chapter, we're going to talk more about how signals are then transmitted into cells. So first, let's talk about hormones overall. What are they? What do they do? Um, so like I just mentioned, hormones are really important for transmitting signals among cells. Um, there might be an organ or a tissue type in one part of your body that um, will secrete hormones that will tell a completely different part of your body to um, to do something, to have some, to perform some kind of function. Um, and so hormones are um, also useful because they are specific. So once they are sent uh, to travel throughout the body, um, they, they send their signal only into cells that have a matching receptor. Um, if the cell does not have a matching receptor, the hormone will not give its signal to that particular cell. Um, and hormones, when they are secreted, they're secreted from two particular types of glands. There are exocrine, gran exocrine glands, which help release hormones into ducts, which help them stay relatively localized. Um, and those are different from endocrine glands, which help release hormones into the bloodstream to help them circulate throughout the body. Um, and in this diagram at the bottom, we have a picture of these endocrine cells, which are releasing these different hormones that are getting sent into the bloodstream, which ultimately are getting sent to different types of cells, and only the cell with the particular receptor for the particular hormone is able to receive the signal from each of those individual hormones. And on the right, we have this figure that shows a few of the different areas throughout the body that are really important for producing different types of hormones, and we'll go into discuss a number of these throughout this video. So first we'll get started with the pancreas. The pancreas is primarily an exocrine gland. Um, meaning it's uh, sending hormones into ducts, right? Um, and so when it does, so the hormones that the pancreas secretes as an exocrine gland um, are mostly digestive enzymes, which are ultimately released into the small intestines to help break down some of the nutrients that we take up through our diet. Um, and this picture here shows um, sort of the structure of the pancreas and the, the, the duct, right? <laughs> That's important for this um, these, the secretion of these digestive enzymes. And some of the digestive enzymes that are secreted by the pancreas um, in an exocrine way are trypsin and chymotrypsin, which help to break down proteins, RNase A, which helps to break down RNA, alpha amylase, which helps to break down starches and carbohydrates, and phospholipase A2, which helps to break down fats. So these are all different components that we might encounter in our diet as we eat and take food. And our pancreas helps to secrete these hormones that help our bodies break down these foods and use them um, for energy or for storage of energy. So the rest of the pancreas, the relatively smaller portion, is an endocrine gland. And this includes the islet of Langerhans. And the, the endocrine portion of the pancreas secretes these polypeptide hormones that are really important for maintaining energy homeostasis. These, because they are polypeptides, they're proteins, right? So they are going to be translated in the rough ER, and then they're going to move on to the Golgi apparatus, where they'll be processed and modified. And then finally, they'll be sent by vesicles out to the plasma membrane, where they'll finally be secreted through exocytosis and sent to travel throughout the bloodstream to send signals to other cells and other areas of the body. So let's talk about some of those polypeptide hormones that are from the islets of Langerhans. Uh, so first we have alpha cells. Alpha cells are really important for secreting glucagon, which is a, one of those polypeptide hormones. Glucagon is released when levels of blood glucose are low. So it's a signal to start um, breaking down glycogen and to start synthesizing glucose in the liver. So essentially when energy levels are low, glucagon gets secreted to help mobilize some of that stored energy that, um, that we're holding onto in our liver. Um, glucagon also helps to promote the breakdown of fats and adipose cells for the same reason. Uh, fats are used as energy storage, and so glucagon is a sign that now that energy needs to be um, used. So fats are uh, released and broken down and ultimately help to make energy for cells that need it. Um, the next islet hormone we're going to talk about is insulin, which is secreted by beta cells. So beta cells are sort of, or insulin, I should say, is sort of the 
uh, secreted in the opposite situation of when glucagon is released. So insulin is released when levels of blood glucose are high, um, such as right after you've had um, a meal that has a lot of carbohydrates in it. And so insulin, um, as you might expect, sort of has the opposite role of glucagon, where it's more for energy storage and uptake. Um, so insulin is going to help cells take up some of that glucose from the blood, as well as helping to promote the synthesis of glycogen, protein, and fat by muscle, liver, and adipose cells. Um, so ultimately, glucagon and insulin are sort of opposing each other. Glucagon is released when energy levels are low, and we need to use our stored energy. Insulin is secreted when energy levels or when nutrient levels are high, and we have the opportunity to store some of that excess nutrient um, in the form of, in these different energy storage forms. Um, and finally, we have somatostatin. Um, somatostatin is a hormone that's secreted by delta cells. And somatostatin is um, a more of a regulatory hormone that's involved in the inhibition of releasing glucagon, insulin, and a, a whole bunch of other hormones. Um, it also plays a role in digestion, where it slows down digestion. Uh, we won't go too much into the details of somatostatin's role um, in metabolism, um, but we, you will definitely encounter glucagon and insulin again. So that was sort of the very brief summary of what the pancreas does, um, and now we'll move on to the adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands are located on top of the kidneys. And there are two main sort of regions in the adrenal glands. So first we'll discuss the medulla, which is sort of the central part of the adrenal gland. And in the medulla is where catecholamines are produced. Um, and catecholamines are um, a type of uh, amine-containing hormone that we'll talk about in a little bit. That's a small molecule, um, and this includes epinephrine and norepinephrine. Um, and the medulla is really important for helping to mobilize and direct energy resources where and when they're needed. Um, and then in addition to the medulla, there's the cortex of the adrenal gland, which is sort of the outer portion underneath, right underneath the capsule. Um, the cortex is where adrenocortical steroids are produced. So adreno, adrenal gland, cortical cortex, right? The cortex of the adrenal gland is helping to make these adrenocortical steroids. Um, and these are going to include the glucocorticoids, the mineralocorticoids, the androgens, and the estrogens. Um, and these, all these different steroid hormones have a really wide variety of physiological impacts. So first, let's talk about those hormones from the adrenal medulla, which are those catecholamines that we just mentioned. And these include nor epinephrine and norepinephrine. And these have very extremely similar structures. Um, the main difference is that epinephrine has a methyl group here where there's R is, and norepinephrine does not. Um, and so, as a, um, so yeah, as a result, they have very signal similar uh, roles um, because they are so similar structurally. Um, and these two hormones are both involved in the fight or flight stress response. And the, they act on different classes of receptors. So first are the alpha adrenergic receptors. Alpha adrenergic receptors are involved in the contraction of blood vessels that supply the peripheral organs. And they help to reduce digestion and they also help with blood platelet aggregation. Um, so they essentially sort of help to uh, conserve energy um, during this fight or flight stress response, um, only supplying um, blood and nutrients and oxygen to like the really vital organs. And this is in contrast to the beta adrenergic receptors. Beta adrenergic receptors are involved with uh, glycogen breakdown in liver and muscle, glucose synthesis in the liver, fat breakdown in adipose tissue, dilation of the blood vessels in the lungs and the skeletal muscle, as well as an increased heart rate. So overall, all of these what all these processes have in common is they're for sort of mobilizing a lot of those energy storage during that stress response, that flight or flight. So the so to sort of summarize the difference, the alpha adrenergic receptors are sort of involved in conserving energy to just where it's needed for the most essential functions, and in contrast, the beta adrenergic receptors are more involved in mobilizing energy um, to help um, uh, to help where it's needed to, to, you know, to deliver oxygen and nutrients to tissue to, to help uh, create energy where it's needed. Um, so that, um, that was the adrenal medulla. Um, so now let's talk more about the adrenal cortex with those other types of steroid hormones. Um, and so these types of steroid hormones are a little bit different than a lot of the hormones that we were just discussing, discussing in particular, um, the hormones from the pancreas, which are these polypeptide hormones. So polypeptide hormones um, are relatively polar, so they're able to travel through 
the bloodstream in this aqueous environment, um, but they have trouble getting into cells because of their polar nature. So they require specific receptors that are on the outsides of cells. The steroid hormones are different, right? They're mostly nonpolar, they're mostly hydrophobic. And so when they travel through the blood, they need to be complexed with a, a glycoprotein called transcortin, um, which essentially helps them uh, travel through the, this aqueous environment. Um, on the other hand, because these steroid hormones are pretty hydrophobic, they're able to spontaneously pass right through a cell membrane to reach their receptors, which are actually located inside of cells. So steroid receptors are intracellular, whereas a lot of those other hormone receptors are extracellular, um, or they, they have a component that's outside of the cell so that the, because the hormone itself cannot pass into the cell. So let's go over some of these steroid hormones that are produced in the adrenal cortex. Um, you've seen you've seen these before, so we'll just briefly review what they do. So first we have cortisol or hydrocortisone, which is a glucocorticoid, excuse me, which influences carbohydrate, protein, and lipid metabolism, as well as inflammation and the stress response. There's aldosterone, which is a mineral corticoid. Um, it's more involved in the regulation of salt secretion and water secretion by the kidneys. And then finally, we have testosterone and beta estradiol. Testosterone is an androgen and beta estradiol is an estrogen. These are both um, involved in sexual differentiation and maturation and function. And testosterone, in addition, is involved in muscle growth. You might have heard of it as an anabolic steroid. Um, and you'll, you'll hear the term anabolic in relation to metabolism. Um, an anabolism refers to the building up of macromolecules and bio biological molecules, um, including muscle. Um, and that's in, op in opposition to catabolism, which is breaking down um, nutrients in larger molecules to help use their components to make more energy. Um, so now that you've had this little review of different types of hormones and where they come from, now you should be ready to answer the chapter 13 hormones practice questions.